everyone. We're here for episode 516. First off in the great little big little great big stitchery swap. <laughs> um, I've got my little swap from Calm Creations from Tia with beautiful little note. And I just love it. It's just so cute. It's a little teacup with some beautiful, beautiful lace. The tea bag, she's even little, it's very tiny, you can't see, up, but up close, she's stitched the word tea and done some blanket stitch along the edge, the lovely little string, and oh, it's so cute, and I just love it, Tia, thank you so much. Now, um, that's the only swap I've done, I was going to do one with Christine, but she was so inundated, it's fine. Um, I... Did I show this last time or not? I don't know. Here's my final. I don't think I'm doing any more on this and unless I add it to another piece. So I'll just check. Good. Most of it's in frame. I've added a bit of lace down the side. Um, I hope I didn't already show this, but if I did, you're seeing it again. A uh, little bit of numbering from the French labels. I've made a little sort of a mushroom because I felt that space there was a little bit too big. And I love it. I love it. Um, I could bleach it a bit more to get a bit of this scuffy stuff out, but it is antique. So I have opted for leaving all the edges as raw and the stitching lines in. I don't want to overwork it too much because I really don't want to close up these little stitchy holes. I think I might just mount it on a backing board and put it in a picture frame and just leave enough space you know like not to cover these edges but to just have them so you can see the whole working of the whole piece. It's still got its little crease up the top there. So that's that project. Um, now the book I'm reading uh, this is quite an interesting book to read because always my whole slant has always been that the most important journey in life is your creative journey. And I've always had a lot of creativity. So I've always had um, lots of one need to play and create and just the joy of creating. Very important journey. Now... If anyone knows about the book Artist's Way, it's like a 12-step. Actually, I should probably feature that. It's a 12-step program for people to be creative. So if you feel creatively blocked, if you've never actually even paid attention to your creativity or, you know, the stories we tell ourselves, I can't do this, I can't do that, I can't do this. Um, when it comes to painting, creating, embroidery, all of those things. Uh, that is a fabulous course to do. I did it maybe, actually it's really interesting because Lily's just started doing it and it's, it's like, oh my goodness, you're doing it when you're, you know, 28. And I actually did it the first time when I was 28 as well as a creative inner journey. Uh, which So because I've been on an art retreat with the Flowers Festival and just having such a good time, this book really is speaking to me. And so I just wanted to talk about uh, a sentence that I read in here that really resonated with me. So as babies, creativity is our default setting. And at some point in our early development, we'll all have used our senses and instincts to survive and learn without the hindrance of intellectual analysis. And to me, that actually... I might just slip through. So there's not a lot of pictures, but I might just give you some uh, picture porn to enjoy while I'm talking. I've always remembered something that someone said to me a long time ago, that when we are babies, when we're children, we watch adults walking for two years before we walk. We listen to our parents speaking or those our loved ones around us um, speaking for ages before we form words and letters. And, you know, it just, it just reminded me that when I was at kindergarten, 
my first instinct with a canvas in front of me was to just slap paint around and have a great old time just enjoying the lushness of the paint and the colour. What actually happened was I had a kindergarten teacher who was so blocked creatively that she just stood over me in such an angry manner just telling me to paint and it jammed me up so I didn't know what to paint and I said I don't know what to paint because I didn't think she would approve of me just slapping around colour and enjoying myself. And she said, paint a train or something like that. And uh, ever since then, I've been jammed up about the flow. You know, I've, obviously by my age, I'm working, I should have worked it through by now, but it still comes up. If someone upsets me, I go back into that jam. And as I said in the last video, that had happened. And um, I'd gone inward and felt uh, stifled and I shut down a bit over this last week and you know it happens to all of us we have to be kind to ourselves it's not a it's not a um, a terrible thing you know it's just it happens to us all finding the kindness to ourselves to come back and create from a joyful open space after something bad happens uh, I feel like I've done that a lot in my life <laughs> I've never really gone into uh, the traumas that I've had through throughout my life uh, but that first instance was a classic example of being a sensitive soul a sensitive creative and someone just bullying me or lording it over me in a way that has hindered my own creative playful journey uh, not the first time it happened, and I'm sure it has happened to many of us. So this book has just been sparking a little bit of that. So there's lots, of, lots in it. Curiosity, observation, colours. Look at that. All those colours. Um, so this book is called Conscious Creativity, Look, Connect, Create, and it's by Philippa Stanton um, at... 5-F-T-I-N-F I don't know, I think that's probably an Instagram I haven't gone and looked at it but I just oh, look, there's a lot in this that speaks to me so the other thing that spoke to me when I was teaching um, primary school children the teaching is called the Reggio Amelia method which is, so it's supposed to be pre-primary school really um, and it's all about allowing children to express and explore. And part of that process is the documentation. So in, in that environment, we would take photos of the children working and so that we had documentation. So after teaching for a little while and, you know, looking at this documentation um, form of memory, uh, I went to art school and did my Diploma of Visual Arts. During that time, I realised that where I'd been really good at documenting everybody else, <laughs> I wasn't really very good at documenting my own work. So this is a slightly different episode just simply because I've been doing the Flowers Magic and because Fran... Siska is a, uh, has, has been retired as a teacher, or she's still teaching, obviously. But she was teaching and then she's now started to do her teaching online and art-based with the world rather than in a classroom, a small classroom. Uh, it's reminded me that during the course of my diploma, I, I, was, I found that I wasn't documenting deep enough my own work, my own journey, and so this book is just really helping me with the goal this year that I decided that I wanted to find my own work and find my own um, place as an artist. And I th I, I, I'm probably not putting it into words very well, but 
this last week or two, doing 15 days out of the 20 so far, there's still quite a bit to do with the Flowers Magic course, oh, it's just put me into that space again and reminded me. And even just emptying out the garage and beginning to... Um, go through the steps to get it as a workable studio rather than a bedroom upstairs that I'm sort of hidden in but a workable studio that's got a door that people can come in and out of that's got more space for you know table space for laying things out and spreading out um oh it's just uh, I feel like I've just hit a massive turning point so this book is part of that journey uh, my memory of doing the artist way and and what Lily's saying to me about her journey with the artist way is also telling that story. Um, so yeah, this is a great little book that kind of has a broad scope. So um, beautiful, lots of colours. I look, I look at, just look at that of course my favorite indigo dyeing um, is really special oh look at that and I love a bit of red too so anyway there's this book but um, no I'm going to touch on this another time while we're still on the subject of documentation here's my little book with a reminder to believe that I can do it and I know that some of you have seen this uh, started with the houses for the house art when um, last year when we were doing houses on Roxy's volume three. Was it three or two? Uh, volume two, the winter journal that I was doing. Uh, I started to put the, my ideas into my book and started basically my artist journey all over again when it came to delving deeper and looking at documentation all right so um looking deeper at what do i like about this why am i right why am i doing this what's sparking inspiration Uh, so that really started last year and then sketching up some ideas, finding pictures, maybe sketching out an idea of what I wanted to um, draw. Oh, so I've got sniffles. I really went deep with the little houses <laughs> because I realised I hadn't been doing a lot of houses and I just actually, I love them. And uh, I know I'm looking forward to seeing what Susanna and her group... Actually, unfortunately, I can't make her retreat, but looking forward to what people make from Susanna's print. She's printed out, um, so Vintage Blend Studio. So Susanna has printed out, uh, like, tea towels of her ideas and houses from being in England and Paris, mainly England, she got the idea, and... Oh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. So, okay, so these are stories for another time. Um, let's see. Uh, I started to actually print out some of the things that I was doing online. Uh, this year with wanting to really focus back on creativity, focusing on playfulness, lightness, I have found that I am a little bit allergic to social media. And I know I'm hearing other people saying this too. You know, always the thought of creating the video, making, you know, having your content, all of that stuff has really been getting in the way of joyful play and, so part of my journey this year was to make a, a, you know, recommit to that away from the camera a little bit. And I know we think we have to do that uh, for our work to get out there, but it's not necessarily true. So printing out the classes, getting some printouts of other people's ideas of what they've done with that class so as I can have that creative journey 
then starting to take pictures of my stuff, my work, to get it out of what I'm seeing other people doing into a visual representation for myself. Um, some people are really good at having a connection to their visual representation of themselves. From my trauma past, uh, what happens is, is that you, you kind of lose a connection to that. It's really been important for me to document, and this is what I was talking about with the Reggio stuff, that it's really good for the kids to have not just their own inner world, but to have it reflected back to them of what they're creating. And it helps with memory and it helps with... Um, I, I, you know, I know that it's not said, but I believe it helps with self-esteem. And so for me, doing this now creative journey of observing my work, writing about it, observing the journey of it, helps to ground me into my own journey. Um, part of complex PTSD, there's always... Um, a sense of jumping out of your body from the shock and from the traumas that's ha that have happened. Um, so it really helps me to re-ground back in. So my book, um, and just a, a, a reminder too, because I realised, I'm probably having quite a rant on this one, but I realised that building all this journey of things I've made so things have sold and gone you know well I'm so grateful I've got YouTubes and I've got Instagram as a memory of those things that have been sold but also this is for me a memory of the work that I've done so one thing that's happened which I've really enjoyed has been that when I finished my volume three, The Garden Path, and I made a little reel on Instagram, I, I, you know, I, I got validation because it got a thousand followers from that one reel. Uh, I'd always looked at Instagram as like, oh yeah, people are, you know, if they're your friends, <laughs> they're commenting. But it just, it just somehow that one thing, and I wasn't planned, I didn't know it was gonna happen, just did something that resonated with people in the world and I'm just really grateful for that. So this is my sketchbook, this is my artist journal, ideas, things that I've played with, mucked around with, a bit of weaving, you know, just uh, ideas. When, when we were doing the monogram, I was looking at lettering, um, some of my paintings, I've got a record that I was doing those and stopped at this point because I wasn't quite sure where I wanted to go with them. Uh, my large piece, you know, I've got little sketches of some of the ideas that I wanted to put on the pocket of my large piece. Um, messing around, play, Easter eggs, a cute little bunny. Um, a day out at a friend's with other artists and just playing with um, type, weaving colours. This was actually shingles, um, probably seen it before, but I was putting these on and I thought, I, I, at the time I thought, this is really funny, I feel good about being single, single life for me, um, but I'm making shingles, so I was, you know, play, it's play, and it's not a finished artwork, it's not something that's sold, it's just playfulness that sparks maybe something later this was just humorous for me so yeah, all my roxies are down the garden path playing with some of the stamps we've made in the roxies weekly challenge uh, which i never thought worked but still don't think work but still gave me a little play area i've got some couple of the printouts from some of the books so, so some flower ideas um, which has been good now that we're doing the flower journal. Playing with uh, background, painted backgrounds and just, you know, weaving them and seeing how they look, what it sparks in me. Uh, it sparked a collage, which then sparked an oval piece. 
Uh, so that's a piece that I've photocopied it. Uh, so often I scan in my work and photocopy it. So sorry if this is a bit wordy, this this one, but it, it it's the flow on of where I'm up at at the moment, where I'm where I'm at, and what it's meaning to me. Um, just you know, just our little bits of wet wipes that end up having a certain colour scheme we might like. Um, this is something that was really uh, interesting to me. So um, Flo Stevenson. So uh, I've I've actually printed out because she had a lot to say about the slaves um, fleeing past the Mason Dixon line to go go into uh, freedom. And so she's very much talking the story of Harriet Tubman. And, you know, I, I'm, I am back into a relationship with an African. And so for me, I am learning a lot about white privilege and learning a lot about... I've dated a couple of Africans over the last few years. Um, that's not... I'm got, not gloating about that. I'm, it's just a statement. It's just happened that way. But the journey I've been on has been very um, important to me as someone who ha has white privilege to, you know, to, to understand a lot deeper what racism is about and how it affects people in the world. Uh, okay, so it's just, that's just a sideline. I mean, my art has nothing to do with this, but my whole, uh, my spiritual journey and my learning journey on my soul level has a lot to do about that because there's been a lot of um, um, understanding when you've had trauma in the past of how that affects you as a human being in the world. So... My mermaids that I'm still making, I haven't shown because I'm. it's still a bit of a journey that's off camera at the moment. Uh, I did a lot of um, just research on the way mermaids have been portrayed. Um, this was fascinating. Uh, where are the gills? Like, you know, and this beautiful representation that is not, you know, like black eyes maybe and sharper teeth and this not Disney romanticising of what a mermaid may actually be like because honestly they need sharp claws they need teeth and at least this one's got gills you know it's 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 just um an interesting journey that I've been looking at so anyway I'm getting maybe too deep into my thoughts and everything um, the start of my volume four, a couple of little classes that I've done. I did the, I went to the class to do the rug weaving with Ilka. Um, so I'm, I'm documenting each of my parts of my Roxy's Journal of Stitchery. Uh, I, obviously I have to put my It's Love one here still, which is done now. A few little ideas from different people. Um, when I do, so if, if I'm doing a class, so the fodder school, the fodder challenge, uh, I still want to make this, but I, you know, they, they sort of shut it and you don't, you can't make any more. It's gone, it's shut. So I just put this one here as a reminder of what Suzanne's class was about to do this at a later stage. Uh, I was going to do this 30 day. I didn't actually quite do it. I might go back and do it another time. So the Flowers Magic Fest, I printed out all the little things with uh, our little, what we need to have, most of which I had and ticked them off as I've done them. And just a reminder of a couple of the things that people had given us as digital printouts. And I've started to document, like I documented my purple cabbage. So, oh, sorry, it's off the top of the page. I documented my purple cabbage. Um, this is just my reminders of some of the work I've done and what I thought about it and what I liked, uh, what I didn't like maybe, what I loved. Uh, I hadn't done a still life for a really long time and um, I noticed that even though I don't 
have a lot of focus for a long time that I really enjoyed the fine motor skills and having to focus. I had a real, real sense of achievement with it. So these are just some of my works, but I will actually show you my Flowers Magic Journal. Okay, so I've lifted my camera up. Sorry, I'm sort of standing up so, so you can get the, the full look. But um, it's a dull day, so sorry about the, the shadows. All right, so Flowers Magic. Um, we made a little envelope. Um, this is gessoed material and I've printed over the top of it. So some of my work as we've been going through. And whenever we've made little fodder bits, I've just put them on here. Um, and this quote, it really works in with the, that Conscious Creativity book. One day you'll look back and see that all you, all along you were blooming. And that is the quote of my entire book. <laughs> so little bits of fodder. Had the Frida Kahlo day. Um, so Amy did two classes in the Flowers Magic and she did an archway with the bees and the birds but I'd already done it so I might you know because the class is still going for ages I can do another one the cyanotypes loved it my little still life so even in here rather than putting the actual one I've put a print out just because then it reminds me um, all right, so I've got a bit of uh, Rachel's um, weekly challenge in here. Um, the beautiful flower tags we made with Rachel. More, more different pockets, flower tags. So these are the Rachel pages. Um, fodder as we were going. So collaging as we were going. Um, always scanning in and printing out and then being able to rip out my print out, rip them up and put them in as a way to, you know, just have reminders. A little extra tag. Put in this little envelope pocket that I added in. Um, we did some weaving. Uh, this was a collage day with Robin Marie Smith. Love that. Um, bit, bit of extra stuff. That was Rachel's class. This was my cabbage dye. So I did, I used coffee and cabbage and we made a little planet or a little moon and then sketched over the top a plant in pen. And that this was mixing the colors together. So extra little bits of forage from different days. Little pocket with forage. Um, a second signature, I had already made this with the flowers, so put that in. Fodder, fodder. So I really just, I love coming back through with my bits of fodder that I've made and adding them in. But there's still room. I mean, I've still got another 15, no, I've got another five days, but probably another 15 classes to do. So I've got, you know, I've got more to add. Another with Rachel's little tags. That's a bit of old artwork I found and had never known what to do with it. So it went in the flower book. <laughs> Doodles, collages, doodles, and little zine, which was fun. We painted the backgrounds made the little zines. I just found little funny bits from books to put in. And that's that's my my flowers. So it's it's a bit of an alligator. It's a bit full. <laughs> it's 
very full, in fact. <laughs> um, so full, in fact, that I've been thinking of making another one as <laughs> for the overflow. Uh, but, but also because I'm enjoying it so much, I just want to keep doing it. So good. So anyway, that's it for episode 516. And I hope you enjoyed that. And oh, I don't know what's next. <laughs> more of this, more creativity, more joy in creating, uh, etc. All right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.